let me clarify something before we get into uh, the episode reviews right now. All right. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. I won't be doing reviews of that because it just took a four-week break again. Right? The episode that was supposed to be shown was just a recap one. But they made an announcement, so I'm gonna keep I'm just gonna keep tabs on that, right? So let's be let's be clear again. Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens won't be available for the next four weeks. So the next new episode will be this August. So in the meantime, we'll just have to we'll just have to put up with the uh, with the animes we are we're watching the new animes we're watching out right now. But I got good news for you guys. There is a new anime that debuted this week, and we're going to review its pilot episode. It's actually one of those animes that I have uh, waited for since November of last year. So, mga lifestyle, welcome to another episode reviews digest. Okay, Decadence Episode 2 Wow <laughs> I never thought I would see In a long time I thought I would never see two Different styles of animation in just one episode Two very distinct Animation styles in one episode Okay Now let me uh <clears throat> Let me fix myself up Alright. <clears throat> so, ganito ang kwento ng episode 2. I personally thought the actual characters were introduced in episode 1. But it turns out they are just virtual characters. The real characters are digital in nature. <laughs> so, okay. Kaburagi is the is the as uh, we I, I found out in this episode that Kaburagi is the real lead character here, not the uh, not Natsume the little girl. No, nope, nowhere near it. <clears throat> Natsume doesn't have a uh, Natsume is just an avatar, eh? but she looks she looks human. Everybody in episode one looks human, even Natsume. She doesn't have a, an actual user in in the show. Okay? Her actual user is dead. Alright? And Kaburagi found that out later on in the episode. So that makes her a bug. Which he was sent out to do in the game. Not not well, not exactly a game, but uh, it is owned by a corporation. Which is uh, which? Uh, which they offer it offer it as an alternate alternate lifestyle platform. You heard me, an alternate lifestyle platform. Mala, it's like you're playing. Um, it's like you're playing Mobile Legends or even Ragnarok, but uh, but uh, on a more uh, on an even bigger scale. Parang ganun ang Decadence. Parang ganun yung platform ng Decadence. Okay? There's also a backstory in episode 2 which tells why Kaburagi ended up that way. Paano siya naging recovery agent. Okay? He was one of the top ranked players in, in the platform. But, excuse me. Alright. But, um, something controversial happened. One of their rookies um, used a, a limiter release pro, um, release released this limiter, which is which is uh, against the rules. Bawal, bawal, bawal sa laro. So eventually, his entire team was punished. Because the rookie was part of his team. Uh, most of them got um, got sentenced to a correction, correctional facility. The rookie was dismantled. As in, dismantled. Talagang, dilis ka na ba na parang, talagang parang lumang makina. Okay. 
and his brain is uh his brain his cyber core was removed okay. as for kaburagi he was um he was allowed to live if and only if he becomes a reco so recovery agent for the corporation so he he reluctantly accepted the offer kasi kung hindi well he's gonna get punished as well harshly so that's that's the um that's basically the backstory of it that's why by day he is a uh, an armor repairer and by night he does his missions so later on he found out that Natsume is a bug and she probably doesn't know it okay she probably doesn't know it excuse me water break she probably doesn't know it <clears throat> now it's part of Kaburagi's job to eliminate her he has that option actually kasi ang ang kasunduan nila <clears throat> the terms of their the terms of his deal with the corporation is <clears throat> if he meets a bug he should report it first okay, and wait for further orders so so to, essentially that's that's um that's his job description if he meets a bug he should report it first so he can he can actually he cannot actually act upon it right away so he has to report that first pero if the corporation deems it harmful or well it's a bug confirms if they confirm it's a bug he should eliminate that but uh, in the final scene he realized that this bug this bug has value okay it saved his uh, in a way it saved his life it saved his conscience okay through Natsume Okay, this is the way I see it. Through Natsume, through Natsume, he regained his conscience back. Okay? He got his conscience back. So, nagkaroon na siya uli ng concept of good and evil. Right and wrong. Uh, that was, uh, what you call this? It, it, it came back to him. The concept of right and wrong. So, he, uh, he booted up. He rebooted himself. Because, kasi naglagay siya ng parang energy drink, kung maga pinaka, isang cylinder na ganon, na may fuel, it's fuel for, uh, it's fuel for him, for, e for everything like him. So, if he doesn't, if he doesn't refuel in every 175 years, he's going to die without that fuel. Okay? So, it was a bit hesitant during the first, during the early part of the episode na ilagay na isaksak yun sa kanya na ituro sa kanya but he eventually um, injected in himself he eventually put it in himself so he absorbed niya then he rebooted now i don't know i don't know what's going to happen in the next episode after he reboots himself okay this is this is where probably where the plot will start to thicken all right now animation wise well hmm, they should have um, made the real characters digital to make it more believable right to make it more believable I say ang virtual characters ang avatars dito mas mukhang tao they look more human but their avatars their avatars look more human Whereas the real characters look digital, okay? They look more robotic. The animators should have made it um, CGI, made the real the real world in the show CGI, para medyo uh, so that the the contrast, the contrast in the contrast in backdrop will be uh, epic be more epic right so right now from right now it looks like from artistic to pathetic <laughs> okay but oh to help with the animation the story whoa the story okay second ep 
episode 2 pa lang, may twist na. Episode 2 pa lang, may, may ganun kalaking twist na sa storyline. What more can you ask for in um, in Studio Nuts Studio Nuts um, pilot project? This is actually the this is actually the the, uh, the studio's first project, and it doesn't have a manga. It doesn't have a manga. <laughs> that's the fun thing about that's the fun thing about this show. It is not based on a manga. It's totally original. Okay. That's a rarity these days. That is a rarity in the past, uh, at least in the past 20 years. It's it's a rarity since uh, since the 2000s actually. It's been a rarity since the 2000s that we've seen an anime that is not based on a manga, manga, manhwa, or even a um, or even a live action one. It's totally original by the studios, by the studio of origin. It's totally original. So my hat's off to Studio Nut, right? Decadence, I truly believe, uh, to Studio Nut, I truly believe that, what? this won't be a, a starting point for you. This will be a water gate for you. Uh, I, hope, I hope and I pray that you get, um, that you can get, you can get more clients, go, get more projects. You can think of, Think of projects like this on your own and not based on a manga. Right? The anime industry needs studios like you. Where you can come up with animes that that are not based on that did not that weren't inspired by weren't inspired by mangas or anything otakuish. Anything like that. So Episode 2. Thumbs up. Okay. That's now. The uh, the real the real characters. That's only my suggestion. You should make it CGI to make it to make it more epic. All right. To make it more to make the transition from virtual to real more epic. That's 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 just my that's just my suggestion. But hey, what what do I know about animation? I'm not an animator. I'm not I'm not a graphic artist. Okay. I'm just a fan. <laughs> I'm just another otaku. So again. Decadence episode 2 mm, Thumbs up I am so going to I'm so going to wait for the next episode mm, The plot thickens folks Super Hexeros episode 3 It's a bit um no no battle scenes again no battle scenes so just um an episode where where the girls okay the girl members uh, find ways to up their h energy so to speak <laughs> all right they've even recommended hoshino on how to on how their ways on how to do it all right from uh, erotic massages <laughs> to milk baths to even watching porn <laughs> all right let me remind you guys these are uh junior high school students okay nearly all of them are in junior high hulaan nyo na lang kung ano mga edad nila <laughs> imagine your imagine imagine this um uh, 15, 16 year olds watching porn because they because the whole world depends on it. All right. Okay. So th that's where the humor part comes in. So in the in the first part of the episode, Hoshiro's panties got stolen by the enemy. She couldn't she couldn't punch the enemy uh, that strongly. Okay. Parang Umano lang, eh, parang, parang ginanan lang yung kalaban eh. So, the enemy managed to steal her panties. As a, uh, as a sign of humiliation. Okay? As a sign of humiliation, basically. So, they were able, actually this, uh, this particular enemy loves to steal panties. Okay? That's how, that's how it gets its, 
gets uh, the human sexual energy. It gets it from those panties. All right, weird. Napakarami ng kawirduhan ang anime na to. Eventually, um, to all this, eventually, Rhett, the, the male lead, eventually takes it, takes that, takes the enemy out himself. Now, wow, in the in the final scene, all right, Hoshino thought Rhett was touching her. Okay, it was was. Uh, was fondling her, fondling her opais. Opais. Fondling her opais. Yung pala si yung isang yung isang yung isang nilang kasama na white hair. <laughs> it was really funny. Okay. So she was able, so Hoshino was able to accumulate that H energy, but due to her frustration, she punched. A hole again into the ceiling of the headquarters. Wala, na wala lahat. Lahat ang inipun niya. So, the, the, girl, the other girl members were now asking, What's your secret? What's your secret? <laughs> oh my god. But, uh, overall, um, episode 3 of Super Hex Roswell, it's like this. Alright. I'm a bit um, disappointed because there were no actual battle scenes. Okay? The enemy here wasn't that um, wasn't that uh, scary, all right? Wasn't that scary? It's just a it's just a butterfly humanoid running around running around stealing stealing girls' panties, <laughs> all right? A panty thief, basically. It, it, it's a panty thief, so. But uh, the humor part, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm totally satisfied with the humor part, <laughs> alright? I'm totally satisfied with the humor part. But I'm uh, waiting for that episode wherein all five members of the, uh, of the Hexoros team would, uh, would, take out, uh, would, take out a, would take out a really big enemy, like a boss enemy or something. They would uh, they would do a, they would do a slam bang finish to an episode. I'm really waiting for that. All right. So yeah, overall, uh, Super Hexodus episode three, like that. All right. I don't want to give it a thumbs down, but because uh, with sex comes humor. Right. The humor part. Uh, they didn't they didn't waste. It. They didn't waste any. They didn't waste anything there. All right, the humor part is there, so that's why I gave it like this. I gave it like this. All right. Super Hexodus is still good. Okay. So, if you uh, if you watch that anime, I strongly suggest I I suggest I suggest you keep on watching that. All right. If you're if you're into green humor, it's the anime for you. But uh, I mainly watch it because, well, storyline is good and the humor amplifies it. So, again, episode 3 is like that. Okay, they, I'm, I hope they can, I'm sure they're going to, they're going to outdo themselves in episode, I, I'm sure the animators will outdo themselves in episode 4. So, that's my, that's my review of, uh, of this episode of Super Hexeros. Peter Grill and the Philosopher's Stone episode 2. Oh my god. Another Peter Grill episode that made me laugh. <laughs> so, wow. <laughs> this anime so far has never failed has never failed to make me uh, laugh my ass out. <laughs> if you're uh, well, if you're if you can handle adult anime like me, you, you would appreciate Peter Grill, especially this episode, all right? <clears throat> he was almost caught by his fiance cheating. As we all know, he bedded the Ogre sisters, both of them, <laughs> all right? His fiance Luvelia was knocking on the door, all right? Then all of a sudden, 
Tinapon na lang niya sa cabinet yung dalawang magkapatid. Tinapon na lang niya sa cabinet yung dalawang magkapatid. Just like, like old clothes. Pok, pok. Mm. Slammed, slammed the cabinet door like nothing happened. And he, he was sweating because he was really getting nervous, alright? Because he knew that, because he knew that he just cheated on Lubelia. So, they, they had plans. Okay, well, Novelli has plans to make public their engagement. So, of course, you have, uh, you have to go to, you have, they have to go to Novelli's father, the guild master. Peter Grill's, well, boss or clan leader or guild leader, whatever you may call it. Who was, who is a scary as shit character. All right. Personally, I do not want him for a father-in-law. I do not want him for a father-in-law. He is that scary. All right. And with a bad temper to match. With a with a, with a temper problem to match. All right. Personally, if that were if that were real, I wouldn't want him for a father-in-law. So, I do not envy Peter's position. Peter's status right now, okay? He has to deal with this shit. But it, but it makes the humor part more more uh, more appreciative, okay? It makes you it makes you appreciate it makes you appreciate this anime even more. <laughs> because you basically feel sorry for the lead character, all right? You basically feel sorry for him. Now, during the engagement party, all right? The Ogre sisters try to to seduce him again. Both of them, alright? Both of them. Why are these sisters into threesomes? Luvenia almost catches them. Pero nakabag, na, 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 dis, na discard yan agad ni Peter. What did he do? He throws both sisters on the table. He was already he was already naked from the waist down. So he sits on the table. Alright. So, we're all cool. Nothing, nothing's being noticed. Okay, nothing's being noticed. Wala na, parang wala, parang wala. Then, <clears throat> while he was talking to Novelia, the sisters were actually playing with. Actually, it's um, the the animators decide. The animators uh, made it in the form of a of a of, a, of an elephant with its with its tusk up. <laughs> Right for <clears throat> to make it as awesome as possible. All right, I completely get it. But <clears throat> if you're a, um, if you're that green-minded, you would instantly get it. All right, that part that that uh, Peter's part is covered by an elephant. All right. So what made me what made me laugh what made me laugh my ass off is. The part when the elder ogre sister showed Peter how much of a liar he was, right? Her glove was wet with 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 Peter's love juice. <laughs> that 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 made me laugh my ass off. All right, the palawan I was doing, grave. You know what? <clears throat> The guy sitting on a table with at least one woman hiding inside the table and playing with his uh, playing with his private parts is one of them. It's probably it's arguably okay. Anyone can anyone can argue with me on this. All right, comment below. Comment below. It's one of the it's arguably the most compromising position a man could ever get into, whether it be anime or live action. All right. Tapaka compromising nun, okay? And if you're a straight guy like me, you will understand. If you're a straight guy, man, if you're a straight guy like me, you will understand. Okay? Grabe. <laughs> you know, I I rarely watch anime shorts, okay? I never thought Peter Grill was an anime short. It, it, it really it really has short episodes. Hindi lalagpas ng I think hindi lalagpas ng 14 or 15 minutes. Hindi lalagpas ng 14 or 15 minutes per episode. So far. Alright? So far. But I love watching it. Alright? 
it's probably better than Hetalia World. Probably better, okay? I I wasn't able to finish uh, Hetalia World, so I don't know. But I was able to watch the, the movie of that. Okay? <clears throat> Amongst all the anime shorts that I have... Um, oh, I, 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 I rarely keep... I rarely watch anime shorts. But, wow. I did not... Um, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a mistake on my part to to watch Peter Grill. All right. I good well for me it's the best anime short this year. It's the best anime short this year. Okay? And whew. <laughs> To tell you honestly, okay, to tell you honestly, uh its storyline is way better than Super Hexeros. Yeah. It's better. It's way better than Super Hexeros. Why? Because, well, the lead character is relatable. Okay? He may be a knight. He may be a, a warrior. But he's no su but he's no superhero like uh, the ones in Super Hexeros. Well, very few can actually relate to anime superheroes. But Peter Grill, okay, in in the first two, in, in these two episodes that, in all that the situations he's been through, you can actually relate, okay? Especially the straight guys, okay? straight guys like me. <clears throat> you would sometimes get into those, into those kinds of positions, okay? Iba na yung ane, tao nito. Talagang matay testing yung pagkalalaki mo. When everybody knows that you're an alpha male, okay? The whole world knows that you're an alpha male, and every woman in the world wants. Wants to father their child. Alright? Ang hirap! Okay? Sakit sa ulo! But then, in the final scene here, eventually, he beds both of them at the same time. Okay? It further complicates things now. Dalong beses na niyang kinama pareho. Dalong beses. Right? Remember, dalong beses. So, it's now official. He's been cheating on Lovelia. <laughs> he's now he's now he, he's now cheating on Lovelia full time. Okay, so uh, I'm very excited as to how episode three will unfold, especially with this um, with the new character, a new well, obviously it's a girl who's after Peter Grill's seed. <laughs> so uh, I'm pretty excited as to how episode three is going to go. Especially with this, uh, with this new rival, all right, with this new rival of Novella and the Ogre Sisters. Wow. Okay. Ilan yan? Novella, the Ogre Sisters. Tatlo na yon. Gulo na yun eh. What more? What more? What more? What more? Okay. What more? If it, if there are four already in in Peter's life, who are who actually want who actually want. Uh, want to be the father of their child. Wow. Okay. I don't envy Peter Gris' position right now. But it's hilarious to watch. Alright. Peter Grill and The Philosopher's Time. Two thumbs up for episode two. My God. I just can't wait for episode three. And I hope I... I hope they, I hope the animators make me laugh, laugh my ass off. God of High School, Episode 2. <laughs> rarely has been, rarely was there an Episode 2 that, that left me breathless after watching it, okay? Wow! <laughs> the fight scenes were over the top again, okay? God of High School has again lived up but to roll. <laughs> okay, I forgot to roll my B-roll camera. It's lived up to the hype again. Okay. Jin Mori, the uh, one of the three lead characters, really wants to kill this. Uh, really wants to get his hands at this. Um, the, the guy with the dreadlocks, with the with the with the straight jacket on, only only fights with his kicks. But that guy already broke his broke his arm restraints to fight the Tai Chi master that um, that that Mori befriended. 
okay, who's now, who, who became friends with Mori. He plans on killing him. Then, Mori interferes. Okay. In any martial arts match, what he did was illegal. Okay. It was, it's breaking the rules. Whether it be in any real-life martial arts match, whether it be boxing or even MMA, that's illegal. Even in professional wrestling, it's illegal. Okay. So what he did was a gross violation of the rules. Okay, we get that. But, Mr. Dreadlock tried to, well, assert himself, well, more, more embarrassed him again, okay, in his own match. Okay? Triple kicks him, or triple kicks him out of the ring. Mori just showed the entire anime world how, how much of an OP he can, oh, sorry. He just showed the entire anime world how OP can he get, how OP he can get, okay? Triple kicks Mr. Dreadlocks out of the ring, okay? Almost out of existence. <laughs> Almost out of existence. That's how much he wanted to kill the guy. Okay? Wow. Now, well, in the end, of course, he, he got arrested. Okay, the judges, uh, the judges and admins interfered, of course. So they have to, they have to enforce the rules. Rules, even, uh, even enemy has rules. Okay. So they have to enforce the rules. So he was escorted out of the building, and I don't know. Well, there was no, uh, the clear winner wasn't announced. So we might get that in episode three, but. But instead of, but instead of the, the the fans hating him, they were cheering for him. Chini cheer sa ng crowd, okay? The girls suddenly suddenly throw their I love yous at him, <laughs> and his two um, his two co lead his two co leads were there to well, of course cheer him on, and they actually saw how strong he was on the um. On, on the on the screen in the locker room they were they watched the whole mat they watched the whole thing happen in inside the locker room because mga monitors they saw how strong mori is okay again the whole anime world now knows how op jin mori can get okay which makes god of high school a must watch I never got so excited about a martial arts anime other than Baki, okay? Other than Baki or even, well, I didn't, I actually didn't watch Naka because I, I wasn't that impressed, okay? I wasn't that impressed. Uh, well, such martial arts anime, animes that incorporate, incorporated martial arts like, uh, of course, Baki, um, Ghost Fighter, uh, here in the Philippines it's known as Ghost Fighter, but uh, in, in anywhere else in the world, especially Japan, it's known as Yu Yu Hakusho. Alright? Or even Dragon Ball Z. Okay? Never have I seen such exciting fight scenes as God of High School. The only one closest to it right now is Baki. Baki the Grappler, the original, alright? I'm, I am a, I'm a big fan of the original Baki anime. Okay? But, hey, God of High School has the God of High School anime has room to improve. Okay, they can. It's been thirty. It's been three decades since since uh, the original Baki anime was uh, since the original Baki anime. They got room to improve. They got room to to eclipse what uh, what the what Baki what the Baki anime has done. Okay. Wow. Okay. If, if God of High School doesn't inspire future MMA, MMA fighters, I don't know what will. Okay. The fight scenes itself, here in episode 2, alright? If you're, if you're a budding MMA fighter and you, and you don't watch God of High School, oh, oh, you're missing out. You're missing out on the motivational part of your sport. But what do I know? I, I'm not into MMA. 
MMA is not my sport, but as an otaku, you can get inspired by God of High School, but what, by what, what the what the characters are doing here. So basically, man, and here, okay, here's another here's another refreshing thing about God of God of High School. It is not set in Japan, but Seoul, South Korea. Of course, it's where God of High School came from. So natural. Isa setting nila sa Korea yon. <laughs> Okay. Even the names of the characters are Korean. So, basically, God of High School is a breath of fresh air to the anime world, to to uh, to the anime industry. Okay, I am so glad they made an anime adaptation of this. Okay. It's it's one of the big three of manhwa. Okay, Noblesse, Tower of God. God of High School. Okay. But the last two I mentioned, they have TV, they were adopted as TV animes. Kasi ang nobles, ang movie lang. It has yet to receive a TV anime adaptation. So, nobles already has two movies. Eh. Has two animated movie versions na. So, yeah. <laughs> God of High School, two thumbs up for episode two. Holy shit. Grabe. I just can't wait for episode 3! <sighs> I just can't wait for episode 3! Oh my god! Grabe ang God of High School! Woo! You know what? If you're into fighting games, okay, like I was during, uh, during the late 90s to early 2000s, I was addicted to fighting games. But right now, if you're into fighting games in the arcade, God of High School is a good choice because It'll make you. It'll make you quit those arcade games and just watch this one. <laughs> it's like the feel. Okay, the here in this episode, the feel is a lot like. Wow, it's more like um, it's more like. It's more like Marvel vs. Capcom 2. <laughs> okay, I I I felt that. It was more like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, but you're but you're not playing it. You're just watching it. You just watch like you're just watching the cinematics of that game. It's exciting, okay? It's so exciting. Um, Let me give you a reality check. 2020 may be wild and crazy as it, as it is, but when it comes to anime, forget about those. Don't cry over those delays, okay? Anime, the anime industry is, is quickly catching up to give us, uh, to make us forget our problems to make us forget our problems, our worries. They are slowly catching up and doing that. They are going they are doing a good job. All right? God of High School is one of them. So episode 2 again of God of High School, two thumbs up. I can't wait for episode 3. I can't wait for episode 3. And here we are. Along comes GB8, episode one, okay, the pilot. <clears throat> God, I've been waiting for this. Um, I've been waiting for this anime since since it was announced in November, December of last year. Uh, it will have an. It will. It will have an anime adaptation. I've seen the previews. I have seen the teasers. Okay, episode one actually did not disappoint me, right? Here's how it goes. Don't watch GB8, all right? If you don't want to remember COVID-19 or otherwise, you better watch this anime, okay? <clears throat> this is more of a, well, it all started with a disease that came out of nowhere and it starts turning people into monsters for two years the disease has been running for two years straight right until two men no, two men from from japan's past suddenly appeared into the future now the year is 2030 okay this year it's it's 2020 right now so 
<clears throat> so it's only 10 years into the future. Imagine that. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, while while I'm telling you the story of the pilot. So the man who got shot into the future, I isang well, it's one samurai and one ninja, as a shinobi, not just not just an ordinary ninja. It's a shinobi, okay, <clears throat> who's fighting a guy whose fighting technique is more is more um, speed oriented, okay. When they came into the when they came to the future, they experienced how a Jibia fights, how how a human turns into a Jibia or the monster that's afflicted with, or a human that's a Jibia, a human that's afflicted with the Jibia virus, or the GB8 virus actually. They got to see <clears throat> how it how it transforms violently into a monster, and they also. They also experience first hand, first hand, and how to neutralize it. Okay, so actually they got help from a girl named Kathleen, which uh, well they actually got help from her in, in, in neutralizing this Jibia. They escaped with, they barely escaped with their lives, and they well, they got a little history lesson and as to how, and how things turned out, but they got to know. Uh, how Japan has succumbed to this virus? Okay, through the uh, through the through the uh, through the doctor that was in charge of the camp they sought refuge in. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> okay. Now, the final episode. No, the final episode. The final scene was one of their uh, newfound friends going home. And getting a sword. Okay. We would call it a samurai these days, because it's what they would use. It's what the old, it's what the samurai, what the samurai in medieval Japan would use. Talaga samurai siya. Kung makintab pa yung <clears throat> makintab makintab pa yung talim. So it looks like it's ha it hasn't been used in uh, it, ha it hasn't been used in decades. Yano kintab pa rin. Like it's like it just came out of the forge. Ganong uh, ganong kabago ang itsura. So uh, I think he plans to give that to to the samurai, to their to their new friend the samurai. <clears throat> I forgot his name again. But wow, okay. GB8 this did not disappoint me with its pilot, except for. The one thing that how they got transported in time to the future, okay? It all started when they, they were on the boat. They were both exiles, actually. They were both sent into exile because I think political dissident yung samurai at yung ninja naman nakapatay, nakapatay ng judge. <laughs> so in medieval Japan, you have two choices actually. You either Either face execution or or be exiled. Now the two chose exile. Say, siempre. At least you're alive. At least they won't cut your head off. <laughs> at least your your head won't run. At least at least your head's not going to roll for now. Okay. So they were on they were on a boat to their to their place of exile, and suddenly the water went the the sea the sea went wild. And all this, they saw this uh, light coming from coming from the sea in front of them, and boom! Next thing they know, they're in 2030 Japan. <laughs> they're in 2030 Tokyo. Okay. In their in their old clothes, so that's why they were instantly recognized as someone from the past. <clears throat> now, I'm very sure that they're going to. They're going to talk about that in episode two of GB8 on how how they got how they got shot in, how they got uh, transported to the future, okay? Because well, up up to when um, the episode ended, they were still stumped. Those the two the the two lead characters were stumped as to why as to why they as to how they got there in the first place. Okay, as to as to how they got into as to how they got into an apocalyptic an, an apocalyptic world. 
all of a sudden they were just they were just uh they were just being sent to their place of exile on a boat and all of a sudden poof they're in the future trying to trying to fight to survive trying to fight these fight these monsters okay? trying to avoid a disease so overall gb8 episode one yep so i hope the um I hope they uh, debunk that uh, how they I hope the animators debunk as to how the, the lead characters were transported in time in in episode two. I think they're going to I think they are going to tackle that in episode two. So yeah. All I can say is, okay, based on the pilot, if you do not want to remember COVID-19, do not watch this anime. Okay? This is more, this is more, this is more than, this is, this, well, actually, this is not a zombie apocalypse anime, right? Like High School of the Dead or even Zombieland Saga. Nope. <laughs> do not think, do not think of, do not think of that when it comes to GB8. This is a monster apocalypse. All right. This is a monster apocalypse. How, um, it, like, like the pan like the pandemic now it's well came out of nowhere basically just like just like covid it came out of nowhere and in the first the, the early part of the ep the episode a new screw was um covering um uh, what you call it? the chaos in venice it, it, the disease actually started in venice okay not in japan but venice italy remind you <clears throat> The first, the second epicenter of COVID-19 was Italy. In GB8, the, the disease started in Italy. Ooh, there are a lot of COVID-19 references in this episode alone. So let's go back to the new screw. They were covering, they were covering the chaos in Venice and they saw a plane blow right by them. The reporters saw one of the one of the passengers turning into a monster and killing everybody inside okay so they eventually the plane crashed into tokyo so a lot of people died all right again if you do not want to remember covid 19 for as long as you live don't watch gb8 all right but seriously it's got a good storyline <laughs> it's got a good storyline my uh my eight to nine month wait for it was worth it personally i don't know about you guys gb8 solbako okay i am going i'm going to i'm going to finish this anime it's scheduled for i think 12 to 13 uh, i think 11 or 12 episodes yeah i am going to finish this anime okay because it is as it's as relevant as it gets when it comes to the pandemic. For me, well, I don't, uh, I don't treat it as a, um, I don't treat it as a form of trauma. I don't treat it as a means to traumatize myself because of what's happening now in the in the real world. But hey, <clears throat> it serves as a history reference. Okay, it serves as a history reference, but with potentially good action potentially good action scenes right i am dying to see how the samurai is going to fight here na not ibibigay mukhang ibibigay na sa kanya yung espada ng pinangako sa kanya ng ano ng matanda dito yung kaibigan ni Kathleen so yeah i can't wait for episode 2 <laughs>